This story is from just about a week ago, but I want to go over this because Majid Nawaz, who is a highly, highly respectable figure who I, I, I admire very much, came out and criticized Sargon of Cod over uh, comments he made in, uh, on Twitter. And I think it's a complicated issue that, that warrants being brought up. So I decided what we'll do is we'll start by talking about the smears, because I think this is a good explanation as to why Sargon refuses to apologize. So first, let me show you this. <clears throat> a Sky News tweet where it says, UKIP candidate Carl Benjamin stands by his comments that he wouldn't even rape a female Labour MP. Majid said, mate, you were given an opportunity to apologize for a crass and horrible tweet. Instead, you doubled down and sounded unhinged. The solution to a double standard isn't to lower yourself into pig shit and pretend it smells of roses. Really sad. He said, UKIP anti-PC dogmatists are not the solution to PC dogmatists. No wonder UKIP is tanking in the polls after Nigel Farage left them. As I said, you can't protest a double standard by behaving in exactly the same way. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't see it that way. I, I do understand what Magic's trying to say, but I think he doesn't understand the context of the comment by Sargon of Akkad. Now, this is an account called Carl Ukip. It is not run by uh, Sargon with a lengthy response, which I'll come to in a second. <clears throat> but, uh, and I, I will say this too, before getting into the BuzzFeed thing, I'm not entirely familiar with the context around the comment either. But the issue, as I understand it, was that Sargon tweeted to a female uh, MEP, or I'm sorry, not an MEP, a female member of parliament for the UK, that he wouldn't even rape her for a few reasons. One, it shows the, it, it makes the point that by saying you wouldn't do something, they would still be outraged by it. Now, naturally, he's still making an allusion to the crime, and that's what they're going for. So sure, sure. But the other issue was uh, uh, apparently, and again, not familiar with the context, and it's not so, and, and, and I bring this up not so much because it's playing to my point. My point is something else. But the idea was that she said something that was particularly egregious. And so Sargon said, uh, Sar uh, Carl said, okay, here, and, and basically kind of, you know, made a point instead of saying to commit a crime, saying he wouldn't, because that was effectively it. Now, again, I don't condone the things he sa uh, Car Carl says. I actually disagree with him saying it. I, 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 I'm a, I think my criticism would be a little bit lighter than uh, Majid, but I do kind of lean more towards where Majid's coming from. I think it, was pro it wasn't a good idea for Sargon to make that tweet. I understand he was trying to make a point. However, I'm going to have to say Sargon should not be apologizing for it, and I'm going to have to agree with it. Look, I think there are legitimate things you can criticize this man for. And I think Sargon would be the first to tell you, you're right. Because, I, you, look, whatever this group of people is, the critical darker web it's been called, or, or you know, the peripheral to the intellectual dark web, the center, centrist types who are willing to engage in contentious conversations, and <laughs> to a certain extent, the more offensive individuals like Sargon, and yes, Sargon is controversial and offensive, Whatever it is, there's a conversation willing to be had and a, and, a, and a willingness to recognize your own faults. This, by BuzzFeed, is a really great reason why apologizing does nothing and you shouldn't do it. And it's unfortunate. It is. Because it used to be that if you did something wrong, you would apologize. You would say, you know, I didn't, I shouldn't have done that. But today, there is no good faith attack. I constantly see the left accusing the right of bad faith, the right accusing the left of bad faith. And maybe that's true. But there is a center of individuals who are engaging in good faith, still being accused of operating in bad faith. This post from BuzzFeed is complete. It's, it's, it's crap. Look at this. A YouTuber standing as a UKIP candidate invites supporters to a gaming community that has chat rooms filled with white supremacist and anti-Semitic content. That's a complete lie. Because the reality was on uh, uh, Discord, yes, people come in and they say things. They were banned almost immediately. What does BuzzFeed do? They jump down and take screenshots of Sargon's 15,000 member strong public chat room. They find the worst of the worst comments that were absolutely removed by the moderators and then act like that's Sargon's fault. Welcome to the internet, you lying, dirty, dirty smear merchants. That's what Sargon referred to the press. Uh, at, that's how he referred to them at an event not uh, recently. I was at, and Sargon invited me to a panel with a bunch of people who paid money to see a man that they liked. And on that panel, I levied some criti criticism towards Sargon because uh, he insulted someone, I think as a soy boy. And I, and, and so Sargon said something to the effect that, <clears throat> 
you know, we, uh, we, sh- uh, I'm sorry. It was, it was the guy Carlos said, we shouldn't just get a rise out of people and insult them. Sargon agreed. And I said, well, hold on, Sargon. You called someone a soy boy. And Sargon was like, well, you know, like, there you go. That's criticism. It's like, okay, that's fair. But Sargon recognizes that and still talks to me. And we, we, we did an interview not too long ago. I, I talked to him like every, every so often because he's somebody who recognizes that, no, you know, okay, sure. Let's have a conversation. As long as you want to engage someone like him in good faith, you're fine. But can you take something from a public, of, a public forum and then blame him with a smear? That's what's insane. So should Sargon apologize for trying to make a point on Twitter that did poorly? No, but I will also point out, I don't, I, Sargon is not an Oxford, you know, PR, edu, like educated marketing guy. He seems to, like he was an office worker, turned into a public figure, thrust into the limelight by the power of the internet. By no means is he perfect. But you can't expect him to understand all of the same rules as everyone else and assume that he's going to be, you know, like, like uh, I think that's what he, what he says actually to, uh, to Majid. You know, Majid is, is, is very, you know, Majid's intellectual dark web. It's like these are intellectual, very, you know, up, I don't want to say, necessarily say upper class, but a very prestigious, clean professional. And Sargon's more of a blue collar guy. In fact, I believe Brett Weinstein it was. Somebody referred to Sargon as a blue collar intellectual, which is rather interesting. And, you know, I'll say this too, because as much as I'm trying to point out, you can criticize the guy and I respect him for accepting that. I don't, e- I, I, I don't even like being forced into a position to try and defend someone like Sargon or, or, or otherwise. I shouldn't have to. You shouldn't be posting this complete crap where you find a public forum with 15,000 people and then act like this is representative of Sargon himself. It's a lie. There, okay, so let me get to the point. What would apologizing do for Sargon? Would it change anyone's mind? No. It would only confirm he was guilty, and that's the problem. Nobody wants to apologize anymore because when you do, you basically say, I confess. And then they say, Sargon, an admitted, you know, abuser, an admitted, no, he refuses to apologize. So they can call him an accused. They can say, oh, well, we believe he's this. But when you apologize, they say he even apologized for it. Well, it's rather interesting that Majid Nawaz has criticized him, but respectable, I do, because I think Majid's a straight shooter. And I think that um, in the context as he understands it, this is his opinion, which I can respect. And I believe Carl can as well. Carl issued a response, and I don't necessarily want to read the whole thing, but I want to highlight uh, some, something, uh, some specific issues. He said, mate, it is literally the only solution because no apology is ever enough for them. I have to agree with Sargon on this one. If I thought any apology would have satisfied, satisfied them, I would have done. But you know exactly what they're like. They have been bloodthirsty animals when it comes to political tax smears and to platforming. We, we don't all have a foundation and LBC show to rely on. And so when Tommy is wiped out on social media in a day, his YouTube channel demonetized and throttled and is reduced to, to buying a bus and driving around to speak his mind in public, I'm afraid they can just sit there and be offended over a three-year-old tweet on a platform on which I'm not even on. It's really fascinating that this one comment Sargon made probably nonchalantly as kind of like, I'll make a point here, is now being weaponized and it's years later. I, I was reading a story earlier about the founder of Mozilla. You may notice I am on the, the Brave browser. You see a little lion right there? This is the Brave browser. It's, it's fantastic. I was going to swear. I'm not going to. I swore earlier, but no, no, no. Brave is, is amazing. It's got a built-in ad blocker. One of the best, okay? So many companies are trying to do workarounds for ad blockers and, and Brave is fantastic. I in no way am sponsored by. No, no. But the reason I bring this up is that the founder of Brave was fired by Mozilla because he donated $1,000 to an organization that defended traditional marriage back in like 2007 or something, back when Obama himself held the exact same political position. And it was years later, activists found out he lost his job because he held the opinion the president held, the Democrat president. It's insane. Sargon's right. They're going to be angry over something three years old. and There's nothing he can do about it. Apologizing would do nothing. In fact, it is more respectable that Sargon says no to these people. Because you know what? There are many working class individuals who just want to feed their family. They just want to get a good job. They want to figure out how to make sure their kids have a better life. And they're called racist bigots every single day. And it's just nonsense. And it gets annoying at a certain point. Unfortunately, I think there are some people who get pushed to the right because of this. Because when you're forced into a corner, you need allies. And so they'll choose the allies best suited to them. The other people being smeared. This means moderate liberals, people who would, would have found themselves in alignment with the left, people like Sargon or Count Dankula, have been shoved to the right 
because the left doesn't want them. And the right will stand up for their rights, even if they're political disagreements. Dave Rubin and Candace Owens and Charlie Kirk, great example. Dave disagrees with uh, Charlie and Candace on, on many issues, and they talk about it publicly together. And it's rather heartwarming. So what? Dave Rubin's, had, you know, a lot of people say that, that that proves Dave Rubin's a conservative. No, it doesn't. It proves that he's just a regular person willing to engage in conversations. And there is a unification by regular individuals to push back on the insanity that leads us to this position. But here, I want to read this last bit. Uh, uh, Carl says, I am such a huge fan of yours, Majid. But you must see how unfair it is to take an amateur like me who made it big and judge me by the standards of Oxbridge educated toffs. It's not fair to have no understanding in the elite classes. It makes it seem like they are not actually in control. Why is that? Why why is that is all it took to send them into a complete meltdown was why is it? I'm I'm confused what I'm trying to say, but he's basically saying, why is it that all it took to send them into meltdown was one dickhead like me? I don't have to apologize. I am free to be a dick. Sure, you don't have to like me, but that is the point I get to choose. I don't like what the London journalistic class does to the regular people of this country when it feels that the moral order it has so oppressively enforced feels threatened. I don't recognize journalists as moral authorities. I view view them as authoritarian bullies running some kind of moral mafia, like a kind of progressive Sharia law. They are, in my opinion, one of the leading causes of extremism in this country because they do not engage honestly with certain issues. My God, I agree with Sargon so much on this point. Luckily, I'm an Englishman, he says. So when I become an extremist, I become a free speech extremist. I believe I have a God-given right as an Englishman to say precisely what I think, and you have the right as an Englishman to hold whatever opinion of it you please. He says, I effing love your work, Majid. I always listen to you and Nige when I'm in London. Even if I disagree with both of you on certain issues, I can tell you are operating from good intentions and are fair-minded to regular folk. Completely agree, 100%. He goes on to say that, um, you know, you're in a nest of vipers who, you know, yada, yada. I'll never stop listening to your views and, and having faith in your work. I firmly believe I am right about this. So much is on the line for so many brave people. The co- the con- their consciences won't let them rest. Uh, it's, it, you know, it, it's, it's, he says, it's, in times like these, I think you should be on my side. Um, the important point, Majid has no obligation to be on your side, Sargon. Uh, however, Majid is one of, a good faith actor who I have tremendous respect for. And he said this. A rape joke is just that. A leftist double standard you wanted to address doesn't take away that you stooped that low to prove a point. Look, I try hard to be fair, so I'm happy to talk tomorrow for two minutes on my show. If you feel unheard on this, but please know I don't agree. And I absolutely respect both of them in this regard. Uh, I'm going to, I lean more towards what Sargon is saying because I have felt the, the, the sting of the smears from the moral arbiters that exist in media and not the worst of it. I look to people who sort of, uh, I have a, def- I have a sort of a defensive uh, reflex for someone like Candace Owens. My understanding, I could be wrong, but Candace, I believe, is engaged to a white man. And as someone, as many of you know, because I bring it up, it's, it's, it's my meme. Like, you know, Ben Shapiro has my wife as a doctor. Tim Pool has I'm mixed race. But there's a reason I bring it up. Because when I see a bunch of white people surrounding and screaming at a black woman who's standing up for her point of view and her rights and how she feels mistreated, and she is not a racist, and these people are screaming at her, it makes me particularly angry because it speaks to me and my perspective. And that's why I understand the idea of social justice. And it's why I think it's inherently a good thing. Unfortunately, it's been taken over by, as Sargon put it, progressive Sharia police who are authoritarians. It's, it's, it's so sad to me that we had this great effort towards ensuring civil rights for all taken over by fringe uh, dogmatic zealots who want to destroy your life over a three-year-old joke, be it crude or crass. Sargon has made several statements I completely reject and denounce. I I have no problem saying that. He he used the white N-word thing, got banned from Patreon. He shouldn't have been banned. I understand what he was trying to do. I think he was wrong to do it. I think Sargon represents a, a decent blue collar, you know, intellectual type. And perhaps he doesn't necessarily know how to navigate the PR system. But you know what? He doesn't have to. I understand the context. I understand what he was trying to do. And while I don't think he was right to do those things, I don't think you should destroy his business or resurface a three year old out of context, poorly made crass joke as if that's actually an argument against his positions. I'm done. I'm, I'm really excited to, to hear any follow-up conversation from Majid because I have tremendous respect for both Majid and Sargon, and I'm going to play favorites right now. I absolutely respect Majid more than Sargon. 
I don't mean that to say that I don't respect either of them. No, it's just on a scale of zero to 100, the amount of respect I have for Medjid is like near the top and Sargon is just a little bit beneath it. I look at Medjid as someone who is, is doing tremendous work, is very smart, has fought the good fight, and, and it, it's really well done. Sargon, I believe, also makes tremendously good points. I respect his position. I believe he has a right to speak out and defend his, his points of view. But I do think Sargon was very mean in the past, and I do think that his comments were crude crass, and he probably shouldn't have done it. That being said, I agree with his point about not apologizing. So in this regard, we have an, an epic conversation hopefully coming. I believe there's, there may be something here that's going to be between uh, Sargon and Majid, and I look forward to it. At the end of the day, whether you like Sargon or not, he is a firm believer in English liberalism, which is a very, very good thing. You know why? Because when you believe, and if it, I've said this before, but the best form of government to be imposed will always, and impose, it's, 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 this is an interesting paradox, will always be center-right libertarianism for one reason. Within a system of right-wing libertarianism, you can do whatever you want for the most part so long as you don't hurt someone the non-aggression principle. What that means is, if you're a social liberal like me, and you're in a system that is predominantly right libertarian, you are free to go and build your own internal enclave that holds certain values, and no one will stop you. If the system was entirely a socially liberal system, then the free market system is restricted. Totalitarianism, left or right, doesn't even matter. It's all bad. So when I see someone like Sargon, I can say he's rude. I can say maybe he's got uh, some, you know, bad ideas, but so long as his core principles are freedom, free speech, free expression, fine, because that means I can do my thing without obstruction, without fear of harm. And that's ultimately why it's a good thing. I lean left, excuse me, but I recognize the inherent freedoms that come with a center right position, uh, a system. And so if you're going to advocate for that, I'm not going to argue again. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll have a debate about it. I think the system could be catastrophic in some ways. But you also acknowledge within a libertarian system, I'm free to do my thing and build my own system. Ron Paul made a really good point. He said, in America today, you're free to go build your socialist society. How come no one's doing it? You can go set up your own little city with all your friends, start farming, and create a socialist little enclave and grow it from there. But nobody does it. There are small communes, yeah, but uh, no big ones. But anyway, I digress. The point I want to make ultimately is that I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and defend Sargon being rude or, or, or crass and crude, but you know what? I will absolutely be on his side when it comes to the fringe wackaloons who will never accept your apology. So thanks for hanging out. I will uh, <laughs> try and be less mad in the next, in my last video, I was angry, but uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow at 10 a.m. Thanks for hanging out.